In the last episode, we sailed the first thousand miles of the Indian Ocean with pretty favorable conditions. It is nice that there are so many islands that we can visit in the Indian Ocean, like Christmas, Cocos, Roderick, Mauritius and La Réunion. That splits up the ocean completely and this part is 2,000 miles, so this is the biggest part. We didn't expect that we would use the big sails during this trip because normally it's just the standard sails with one or more reefs. But our conditions were good and we used the Dow and Jenniker for a long time. Shift in the morning started later than uh, usual, as we used uh, the normal uh, change from Nina to me um, to put up the Jenniker again, and that makes sense because it gives us a lot more speed. 10.1, and we almost concluded our fifth day, 790 miles to go to Port Matera, where we can check in. So I put the iPad on the link app. The Wi-Fi of the device plotter. Now I'm going to change the screen with the HDMI connecting to the other inputs. And now it's an extension of this screen and we can start up Pinnacle Studio and we will continue where we left off. We're actually almost out of everything fresh, so pancakes is a very good solution. We don't have bread on board. This is our fourth night, fifth night, fifth, fifth night.
there is no fresh vegetables in the fridge anymore. Of course, I have my pre-cooked packages in the freezer and that's very convenient to make curries or lasagna or whatever. If you compare this crossing with our first ARC crossing in 2019, it's unbelievable. We loaded the boat with fruits and vegetables before we left. And now before we left this crossing, we already didn't see any shop where we could find fresh fruits or vegetables for two weeks. Yeah, that's my love. She hides away. Like a ghost Ooh, don't she know that we need the same We're getting a little bit of wind again That helps because the wind went back to 10 knots The gusts from the shower are giving us uh, more wind and from a better direction to go straight at the waypoint I think the captain's happy with this Here's the one you saw on the radar. And there's another one over there. There seems to be wind in front of us. There seems to be rain there behind us. And we throw it at us. Went up to 20 knots all of a sudden. And the rain is there as well. Let's put the wheel inside so we don't have to go outside. The sails are okay as we're on wind angle. Or something happens to the autopilot or whatever. We can just steer from inside. Pom coming from port. We don't even know of which tack he is. We're about to fly in for a second as the wind turns from 100 to 23. We have to use the engine as the wind uh, went back to 3 knots. Incredible. <laughs> All the forecasts say 20 knots. And we're way, 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 way down south of the area where there's supposed to be less wind. Even though we're close to the equator, it's not very warm. It's kind of cold, or? It's wind again. Just 16 knots. Good, 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 good. In the end, we only needed the engine for two hours because we also had to fill up the batteries. It was not a problem, so we didn't need the gen set for a day, only two hours motoring. Crazy wind changes today. We tried to make the best of it, but we rolled in the Jenniker as we had a couple of schools around us. After way over 1300 miles, we're still alongside Pom. Also schools, we have to drive every time. Main on port. And Great Circle is on starboard. It's unbelievable that after five, six days on the ocean, we even see POM3 not only on the screen, but also in real life. Normally after so many miles, you are completely alone on the ocean and you don't see anybody on the screen. And seeing POM constantly, ah, feel good. It's a comfortable feeling. There's a squall on that side where POM is. We were able to see her before, but now she's covered by the squall in between. I think where they are, the wind turns already. Look at, yeah. the, look at their uh, course. So we closed up. Yes, we're getting the rain as well, probably.
had to work all of a sudden as we were looking at the squalls in front of us but there was a sneaky squall on our back door as well and the wind went up to 30 knots yeah. Yeah. nice screen mark mm. <laughs> You like my screen set? <laughs> You're like looking at my screens for hours. Or? For hours and hours. And I think all the people who watch yeah, the have, movies love to look We have a follower that uh, likes uh, watching <laughs> our screens as well. And the apparent wind was a little bit high for the Jenniker, but uh, we managed to keep it below or, well, <laughs> eight, 18. I saw 18 something. Yeah, but mostly it was below 15. We came really close to POM, to be honest. <laughs> Five miles. He was 11 miles in front of us when we started and now it's only 5. We'll lose him uh, for sure, as it's, uh, it's a faster boat. Let's have a look at the uh, tracker, how fast we were in the last hour. Oh, yeah. So I put it on heading mode because it seems stabler on heading mode than a wind mode. We couldn't get it too much to an apparent wind angle of 160 because then the Jenica started flapping and it will surely break. But the higher we go, the higher the apparent wind speed went, of course. The battery of the remote control might be empty soon. Early morning on Wednesday. It's about a week ago that we left uh, Cocos Island. Uh, we did 1600 miles since then. It's 6 a.m. now. And we have another hour time difference with uh, Rodriguez. Uh, if you have averages like Saga, 12 knots on the last day, over 24 hours, then it's uh, still feasible, but uh, I think we have to do 11 knots on average to get there at uh, sunset. Sun will be up. Right now. We are so lucky that the Indian Ocean is pretty calm, reasonably calm. Just before we left in Lombok, I always checked the weather. I saw 40 or 50 knots of wind and I can't imagine the waves that you have then on, uh, on the Indian Ocean because the cross waves are very annoying. But our circumstances were so great. Not catching pom with a spinnaker. He's been faster than us all day. We've been chasing him all day as well, but uh, uh, his lead has only grown from five miles to uh, I think about ten miles now. Nina is looking at the draft of the new video. It's the one from the first half. Like it? Yes. Feels like it's ages ago, not like just a week.
then we are on the last day and in the end they forecasted some more wind above 20 knots. Uh, eventually it was uh, until 30 that we had. We had the basic sail, so we rolled in the Janneker in time. And in this ocean, for the first time, we had a wave coming completely from the front over the boat and also one of, from the side banging against the hull and completely over the boat. We never had that before on the trip. Well, last time we were getting the Janaka down. We're close to 100 miles now. Don't believe me if I tell you. Last sunset. Uh, we have about 50 miles to go. It's kind of bumpy. So we will arrive today. Unbelievable. When uh, I was younger and we had to sail to England, it was 100 miles. We were thinking, oh my God, it's a re real trip with the night and the night watches. And now when we have 100 miles to go, we think we're almost there. And actually we are, because it was already in the afternoon and we arrived before midnight. It is very easy to enter Roderick in the night because you're not allowed to go in the channel and I think that's a very wise decision. But you have to anchor outside behind the reefs so you're pretty protected. It's a little bit choppy in the night but it was, uh, in comparison to the nights at sea, it was pretty good. And uh, it's a very open space, you can anchor actually everywhere. Home 3 is already there, they arrived two hours before us. In the next episode we are going to explore Roderick, which is absolutely a great island. <laughs>